the 1930s, Mary Roberts Reinhardt, an important mystery novelist of the era and a visitor at Yuseppa Island's Isaac Walton Club, bought the nearby 100-acre island of Cabbage Key as a wedding present for her son. Just across the channel from Yuseppa, Cabbage Key's historic inn also perches on an Indian shell mound, but there the similarities end. Cabbage Key Inn, built by Reinhardt, is all about simplicity and ease, with its six simple inn rooms, six cottages, and a beer-guzzling, truth-stretching attitude of fun. What's there to do on Cabbage Key besides eat, drink, fish, sleep, repeat? Very little. And that's how islanders and guests love it. Your customer that likes to go fishing, likes to go out boating, likes canoeing, likes that type of recreation. When Cabbage Key comes to mind, most visitors think of cheeseburger in paradise. Jimmy Buffett aside, those who live and work here think home. Living on the island is about 20 people on Cabbage Key. 90% of us that live out here work in the restaurant and the inn and take care of the island. It takes a certain type of person to be able to, to live on an island. Uh, of course, we've had people that have come out, give it a try, and it just wasn't for them. They feel too isolated. So you do have to have a unique character to be able to deal with that. Even those who embrace the secluded, off-the-radar lifestyle sometimes need, or at least are told they need, occasional off-island breaks. Come about your day off if you've been out here seven or eight days. It's time to get off the rock. <laughs> there have been times where we've said it's time for you to get off the rock and make them take a couple of days off. When you're living on an island, you got to be very flexible. Things don't always go as planned. You got to remember everything that you need when you come out to the island because if you come out and you leave something and you forget to get something from the store or whatnot, you're without it. You also have to be flexible in, in your time. Uh, it's not so easy just to go back and forth. Sometimes it'll be low tide so you can't leave because it's too low or it'll be very windy like today and it'll be hard to get across in the boat. Kenneth Wells, whose parents purchased Cabbage Key in 1974, should know what it takes to live on an unbridged island. He began his unbridged island life as a newborn. Well, I grew up on the island, so I've lived here for 29 years now. Growing up on Cabbage Key was a lot of fun. Um, I had a dog and we'd run around the island, build forts, and just had a lot of fun. Fishing, uh, went out boating a lot as a kid. Had my own little Boston whaler at about 15 years old and used to explore all the islands. Had a real good time growing up out in the island. Kenneth and his brother Robert sometimes found the isolation detrimental to their social life while attending school in Fort Myers. But more often, they were the envy of their classmates. There were times where it was more popular than others to, to be out here when I was in high school, when I was a freshman, I was kind of the